Hello, my friends. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. Today, I'm going to be talking about IV fluids, isotonic, hypotonic, hypertonic, and I'm going to be specifically talking about crystalloids. Remember, IV solutions that are crystal clear are crystalloids. So things like normal saline, D5 in water, half normal saline, lactated ringers, that kind of thing. So stay tuned. That's coming right up. Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. I'm talking about something today that I've wanted to talk about for a while, but it seems like other things kept getting on my list of things to talk about. Sorry, I had to adjust my camera just a little bit there. So I'm talking about IV solutions. So I remember when I was a new grad and I was doing my um, orientation at a very, very big teaching hospital. And I was, I uh, had an order to hang lactated ringers. And for whatever reason, all the hospitals I'd done my clinical at, we didn't do lactated ringers. And I didn't know why they'd ordered lactate, lactated ringers. So I asked my preceptor, I said, so why are they ordering this? And she said, look it up. You should know that. And I remember thinking, really? And you know what, you know what the truth is? If somebody knows the answer, they're very happy to tell you what the answer is. If they don't know the answer, they get irritated and say, look it up. So I realized she didn't know the answer to that. So, uh, and that's fine. That's, that's not a problem. People feel put on the spot sometimes when they're asked questions that they don't know the answers to. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between these things. And it's not going to be super in depth, y'all. It's not within our scope of practice to determine which type of IV solution should be ordered. That's a prescriber's decision. However, you should know if it's something's contraindicated, you should know to question it. You should know what to expect with different types of solutions and what rate things should be running at and what, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and just get started just really quickly. So there's really three types of crystalloid solutions, crystal clear. If they're crystal clear, it's a crystalloid. Uh, isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. So isotonic has the same osmolarity as the blood. It expands the extracellular fluid. The extracellular fluid is the plasma. It's the plasma volume, okay? That's what extracellular fluid is. It doesn't mean interstitial fluid. It means plasma volume. So someone who's hypovolemic, low volume, is usually going to be rehydrated with isotonic solution because they don't want to do a bunch of shifting around, right? They want to increase plasma volume and it doesn't cause significant fluid shifts between compartments. So isotonic fluids are almost always the right answer, almost always what we use. Then there's hypotonic solutions. These are, they, these have a lower osmolality, uh, uh, sorry, osmolarity than plasma. So these cause water to move from the extracellular fluid, which means the plasma, into the intracellular fluid. So it blows up the cells. Okay. Hypotonic solutions expand the cell. So the only time we really want to give hypotonic solution is when we have intracellular dehydration, which can occur. Talk a little bit more about that, but intracellular dehydration, we want to shift uh, fluids, like more fluid than normal into the cell. And that's what we want to do. Okay. And then we have hypertonic solutions, which we almost never use. It's like drinking ocean water, right? They always say, don't drink the water. If you're stranded in the ocean, don't drink it because it's such a high salt content. What does it do? Remember, it pulls fluid out of your cells. It actually shrinks your cells. So it has a higher osmolarity or osmolarity than plasma, and it draws water out of the cell. So the only time we want to use that is when we have... Uh, edematous cells, the cells are swollen, particularly in increased intracerebral pressure. Okay. So if they have increased ICP, then we can use hypertonic solutions, but hypertonic solutions are always used with extreme caution and they're never, ever run at high rates. Like hypertonic solutions, if they're used are often run at like three to five mils an hour maybe up to 10 mils an hour, but they are not run at high rates. Okay. They're very cautiously used because they cause cells to shrink and we have to be very careful with that. So the two isotonic solutions that I want you to know are normal saline and lactated ringers. 
Lactated ringers, I think of it as like the sports drink of IV solutions. So normal saline just has sodium chloride in it, whereas lactated ringers has sodium chloride and potassium and some other things in it. I don't have it memorized right off the top of my head. I have a slide later where you'll see what's in it. But it has multiple electrolytes so that it maintains the uh, tonicity of the solution. And so these are the two, and we you should not have to choose between them. It's a prescriber's decision. Which one do you want to use? The only time it really matters is LR is always used with burns. So just remember, lactated ringers is always used with burns. Otherwise, when I do NCLEX questions, usually sodium chloride is the right answer because it's an isotonic solution. It doesn't cause a bunch of fluid shifting. It doesn't cause the cells to swell. It doesn't cause the cells to shrink. It just expands, expands plasma volume, which is usually what we want to do. And then hypotonic solutions can be used uh, if there's intracellular dehydration. So DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, often has intracellular dehydration, which doesn't mean we still are going to volume expand with isotonic solutions, but you might find that they switch it over to half normal saline. Uh, after the initial uh, rehydration. We always rehydrate, rehydrate with normal saline or isotonic solutions. And then we have hypertonic fluids. They have a higher osmolarity than plasma. 3% sodium chloride um, is an example. 5% dextrose in 9% sodium chloride. So that's, that's one that is used uh, probably with a little bit less caution because here's the thing. It is considered hypertonic, but it's only hypertonic for a little while. So D5.9, what happens is the dextrose gets burned off because it's calories. So the dextrose gets burned off. And what we're left with is the 0.9, which is an isotonic solution. So um, sometimes they'll use D5.9 in specific situations. It's not hypertonic the way 3% sodium chloride is hypertonic. So when I say that a hypertonic solution is going to be used very carefully, I mean 3% sodium chloride. I mean, usually it's 0.9%. This is three times the sodium chloride that is normal. It's a high saline, high salt solution. D5.9 is not a high salt, high saline solution. It just has the dextrose in it, which will eventually get burned up and metabolized for energy. Often when people need some dextrose in their IVs, they'll either do D5.45 because that's more isotonic or they'll do D5 in water. The problem is D5 in water is isotonic until the dextrose gets burned off. So again, that's a prescriber decision about what to use. I'm not going to lecture on D5 in water because I'm not an expert in, in when it's used, but uh, it can it can be used, but I don't think you're going to see D5 water as the right answer on NCLEX because D5 water is uh, is is a prescriber preference over other things. Like they could use D5 four five uh, just as easily as they could use, most of the time as they could use D5 water. So it's a very it's it's a very much a prescriber preference, and I don't want to get into all the reasons. I don't even know all the reasons why someone might prefer something over another. I'm just going to talk about the fundamentals here. These are the solutions you're going to see most often. You're not going to see a lot of hypertonic, but if you see a hypertonic, you're probably going to see D5.9. Again, though, it's still not going to be run in at high, at high volumes. It may be run in at 50 or 60 mils an hour, but it's definitely never going to be run in 125 200 mils an hour. If they're going to run anything in at 125 mils an hour, y'all, it's going to be 0.9 or lactated ringers. Those are ones that you can do volume expansion with. Someone needs volume expansion. It's going to be an isotonic solution. A patient with DKA is initially treated with isotonic fluids. After initial resuscitation, the physician orders a hypotonic solution, which of the following fluids is most appropriate. So this is just testing whether you know what's what here, right? So 3% sodium chloride is hypertonic. D5.9 is hypertonic and then isotonic. D5 water is, uh, I think it's mostly isotonic until the D5 is burned off. And then all you've got left is the water. Um, and so 0.45 is the only hypotonic solution here. And hypotonic solutions, remember, expand intracellular volume. So that's why they, they're going to rehydrate with isotonic. And then if they're like, well, we, need, we do need some, we still got some intracellular dehydration, which is a physician decision. That's a physician 
uh, determination. That's not something you should be able to determine. Okay. I just want you to know the differences between ISO hyper and hypotonic solutions. A nurse is caring for a patient with severe hyponatremia. Now hyponatremia is not the same as hypovolemia. Hypovolemia is low volume. Hyponatremia is low sodium. Now often hypovolemia and hyponatremia occur together. But in this case, they're not telling us that to be the case. They're only telling us they're hyponatremic. Which intravenous fluid should the nurse anticipate administering to correct the sodium level? So I'm going to cross off D5 water because there's no sodium chloride in there. And I'm going to cross off 0.45 because that's a hypotonic solution. So what would I expect to, co to correct severe hyponatremia, severe hyponatremia, y'all? So severe hyponatremia, and what we're talking about here is like if they've got a sodium level of like 110, okay, remember 135 to 145, it may even be 90, right? 90. This is not a solution they give when the sodium is 120. If the solution is, if, if their sodium is 120, they may give some sodium tablets, but they're not, this has to be used very carefully. So it's severe hyponatremia. This is 3% sodium chloride that's going to have to be used very carefully. And you have to monitor level of consciousness. Okay, someone's hyponatremic level of consciousness is the thing that you have to assess for. A patient is admitted with signs of dehydration and hypernatremia due to prolonged fever. So they've got both dehydration, which dehydration and hypernatremia often go together because the sodium becomes hyper concentrated with the dehydration due to prolonged fever, which type of IV fluid is most appropriate to rehydrate the cells. Now specifically is telling me to rehydrate the cells. And I told you that when you want to rehydrate the cells, you want to shift fluid into the cells or expand intracellular volume, you have to give a hypotonic solution, right? And they're hypernatremic. So I feel comfortable doing half normal saline because I know I'm going to rehydrate the cells and I'm going to correct some of that hypernatremia because it's half normal saline, which is a lower sodium concentration than is actually in the blood. And so it's going to shift some of that because what's happened is with that hypernatremia, it's pulling fluid out of the cells, right? So we're going to give an ice, uh, hypotonic solution that's going to allow some of that to shift back into the cell. Now it's, we're not re we're not increasing plasma volume with this. We probably, um, they have signs of dehydration and hypernatremia. So we probably are still going to run this in at like 75, 80 mils an hour, maybe a hundred mils an hour, but we're going to have to keep an eye on that sodium level and everything else to make sure they're okay. Patient with increased intracranial pressure requires an IV fluid that will help reduce cerebral edema. So remember, this is a con the context here is not that they have to be rehydrated, it's that we want to reduce cerebral edema, which type of solution is most appropriate. So you want to reduce intracellular swelling in the brain. Redu you want to pull fluid out of the cells, intracellular pressure, decrease, sorry, intracranial pressure. You want to decrease that. And the solution that's appropriate for that is a hypertonic solution. I want you to notice that I didn't necessarily say 3% sodium chloride, although that could have been a right answer um, because it's going to be a prescriber preference. Uh, I don't think they would use D5.9, even though that's considered a, a hypertonic solution. I don't think that's what they would use for this. They might, I, I suppose, the prescriber, depending on how bad it is but I would think they would most likely be using that 3% sodium chloride at a very low rate. A patient is experiencing cellular dehydration due to hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, which IV fluids should the nurse expect to administer after initial stabilization. So remember there's HHS severe, severe, severe dehydration. So they're going to want to increase plasma volume at first. They're at first, they're going to be doing 0.9 or lactated ringers, bolus, probably 0.9, but it's the, again, it's a prescriber decision. So they're, they're increasing plasma volume with an isotonic solution. However, afterwards, which fluid should the nurse expect to administer? And what are we trying to do? We're trying to uh, rehydrate the cells. So, so we're shifting fluid into the cells, expanding cellular volume. And to do that, we use a hypotonic solution. The nurse understands that isotonic fluids are primarily used for which purpose? Expand intravascular volume without causing fluid shifts, shift fluid from intracellular to extracellular spaces, 
decrease extracellular fluid volume or hydrate cells by moving fluid into them? So the correct answer is A. If we wanna shift fluids from intracellular to extracellular spaces, we have to give a hypertonic solution. If we wanna decrease extracellular fluid volume, we'd have to give a diuretic. If we wanna hydrate cells by moving fluid into them, we'd wanna give a hypotonic solution. If you don't understand that, go back and review the beginning of this video. For which of the fine conditions is an isotonic IV solution most appropriate? Cellular dehydration, cerebral edema, severe hyponatremia, or hypovolemia due to hemorrhage. All right, cellular dehydration, if you wanna rehydrate the cells, you have to use a hypotonic solution. Cerebral edema, we wanna carefully use a hypertonic solution. Severe hyponatremia, which is low sodium, we're probably gonna carefully use a hypertonic saline solution. Just basic low volume, just low volume, Due to hemorrhage, we're going to use an isotonic solution. And you might say, well, aren't we going to give blood? I don't know. It depends on what the hemoglobin is. But if they've lost overall volume due to hemorrhage, at first, what we're first going to do is increase plasma volume to manage blood pressure and tissue perfusion. And then we'll look at their hemoglobin and hematocrit to see what that is and see if they need blood. A patient is receiving 3% sodium chloride for hyponatremia, which is low sodium. Hypovolemia is low volume. Hyponatremia is low sodium. What is the most important nursing action during administration? Encourage the patient to drink fluids. No, actually, it's just a low sodium. Monitor neurological status. Yes, y'all. Severe hyponatremia is L changes in LOC. Administer the solution rapidly. No, 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 no. Do not do that. That's like telling someone to drink a gallon of ocean water. Measure urinary output once per shift. Honestly, we'd probably be measuring urine output much more frequently than that uh, because we'd want to make sure that they're doing okay with that. So uh, you'd need to monitor neurologic status. A patient with severe dehydration is prescribed an isotonic solution or fluid. Which of the following should the nurse administer select all that apply? So which are, are our isotonic solutions? 0.45 is hypotonic. 0.9 is isotonic. 3% is hypertonic. D10 in water is not isot isotonic. It's probably hypertonic, to be honest, initially, and then it probably moves to something else once the dextrose is burned off, but it's definitely not isotonic. And then ringer's lactate is the same as lactated ringers, and that's the other isotonic solution. So this is the, what I told you was coming up. So here you can see saline, which is normal saline, right? So the blood has a sodium level of about 140. Saline has a sodium level of about 154. And Ringer's lactate has a lower a sodium level because it has uh, potassium, which saline does not have. It's got lactate, which saline does not have. It's got calcium, which saline does not have. The only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have the bicarb and it doesn't have the magnesium. Now, the Ringer's lactate is a little bit lower uh, tonicity. It's 273, whereas the blood is 285 and saline is 286. So saline, that's why saline is almost always the right answer, y'all, because it's so close in osmolarity to the blood. It's like almost exactly the same. Patient with hyponatremia, which is low sodium, is receiving hypertonic saline. What lab value is most important for the nurse to monitor? I'm just testing vocabulary here. Hyponatremia is low sodium. Saline is sodium. So you're going to monitor serum sodium. So if you don't know the word saline means salt, and if you don't know natremia means sodium, you're going to have trouble with this question. So make sure you know that vocabulary. All right. That's all I wanted to do with you to help you understand crystalloid IV solutions. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.